there were tragedies almost every hour of every day, not just the documented ones, the tragedies of people climbing on planes, but the little tragedies of people with documents not getting admitted or families getting separated and when some people being admitted and others not. But if you had young family members, if you weren't in a position where you could wait for days or push through that crowd, or you were being given conflicting instructions, those, you know, that middle checkpoint of just the humanity to get through, and then the actual, um, you know, verification stage at the gates became very challenging to reach. Planes took off with empty seats repeatedly. So it's not the case that it was like, oh, we're turning you away because there isn't enough space. That was not what was going on. What was going on was the typical chaos of a bureaucracy under the strain of immense crisis. The stakes being made by, by good meaning people, but operating under very tough circumstances. With the fall of Kabul on August 15th, it, it just turned into a massive you know, hysteria over there of people trying to get out. Names were getting added to lists, but then the lists weren't getting updated quickly enough, or people at checkpoints who hadn't slept well in days couldn't read you know, the names properly or read the first name as the last name. There were random uh, people getting through that, that were, were cleared, not cleared, and then others who were cleared could not get through. It, it was it was just chaos. The Taliban trying to disperse individuals. There were people who got crushed to death in that crowd, folks who were collapsing because of heat dehydration. It was an incredibly dangerous and, and chaotic scenario. That's just the people who made it to Kabul. I mean, think about all the people all across the country who never even got to Kabul, let alone to the airport. I mean, it, it, a lot of people got stuck because of the speed with which the collapse occurred. Uh, while many people predicted the collapse, imminent collapse, I think the speed took almost everybody, even perhaps the Taliban itself, by surprise. Without a plan, the US government did not have a plan going into this. Uh, that it just turned into this haphazard. Uh, some got in, some didn't. And we all saw the images on television, but I think that just points directly back to the commander in chief, the lack of leadership, the lack of a game plan, not listening to top brass. I mean, Milley himself said that he had urged the president to do this a different way. Um, it was backwards. We started taking our, our you know, forces out. We started moving away from protecting Americans and our allies before we really had a plan in action. The Bagram Air Force or Air Base, the, the military, US military air base at Bagram should have been kept open. That that would have been the easiest way to, to evacuate the citizens or and you know, American citizens and as well as allies. We were told early on before the evacuation started that they had looked at every scenario possible. Well, they didn't, they clearly didn't because if they had of, we would not have 13 Gold Star families for no reason whatsoever. We could have saved the lives of the Marines that were lost in Afghanistan lately. We just didn't need to go down that road. But I believe it's because no one knows what's happening. No one understood how many Americans were there. No one had a game plan. And again, we have never been given straight answers. There was also some ambivalence in the Biden administration. Well, well we're going to have time. We don't have to throw a bunch of people at this because the Afghan government's going to hold. We're going to be able to process these at embassies. At the same time, do we really want everybody leaving that we've trained up? To, we need people to run the government, deliver services, and fight the war. Do we really want all these people bugging out? And so that was that was some of the assumptions that went into this. So uh, it's just a, it's huge effort that's, that needs to ramp up and, and continue because really it's it, it's not over. I mean, the, the sometimes you hear about oh the evacuation it's it's complete or it's no it's not. <laughs> it's very much not complete. There's still hundreds of thousands of people over there still. President Biden didn't start the war, but it's, it's really how that's how it's ending is, is, the, uh, is the, the key right now is we're not doing a, a good job of, of ending it the, the way this evacuation is, is taking place.